化のために万歳カナダ再装填する Yo, what's up? Today we are going to explore one of the strongest and absolutely most important weapons the Japanese have in the Pacific, and it's the ZIG 1920, also more commonly known as the ZIG Bergmann SMG. This particular SMG has a very illustrious history, especially how it arrived in Japan, because the weapon is originally a further development of a late World War I German SMG. Now, the ZIG Bergmann SMG was a was a series of similar SMGs designed shortly after World War I in 1920 and while being produced in Germany, in the Swiss, also in some other countries due to licenses, the SMG became worldwide known and also worldwide used. It was used in the Baltics, it was used in the Balkans, it was used in South America and even in Far East Asia, absolutely ironically used by the Chinese and the Japanese against each other after the Japanese invaded China in 1937. The mass production of the weapon was very complicated due to the Versailles Treaty which prohibited Germany to build lots of different weapons, especially heavy weapons, and this led to many weapons being built abroad, not in Germany itself, by being licensed. Now, Japan was an even more special case in other nations because Japan demanded the ability to put a bayonet on the weapon. Now, since no one else wanted something like that, or no one else took something like that serious, these weapons weren't produced in the factory, also there was no way to put bayonets on them, even not straight after being produced in Germany or in Switzerland. This led to the fact that the, Jap the Japanese produced their own bayonet holder, specifically made for the ZIG 1920, and once the SMGs arrived in Japan, they were sent to a workshop and then modified to get the bayonet holder, and then the standard Type 30 bayonet was put on, and the Japanese Navy was very happy that they had their own custom-made perfect SMGs, which were absolute high-tech and world-class during the time. But also if you're wondering now, why is this weapon so prevalent in the game and why isn't it just a prototype, like a gold holder weapon, since only roughly 450 versions were delivered to Japan on record? Well, the reason is the following. After the Japanese defeated the Chinese, they were extremely happy to get their hands on the thousands of Chinese self-made copies. And this is what led the weapon to be quite known in the Pacific War, since it became quite normal for American troops to encounter some of them, depending on the area where they fought and depending on the specific Japanese forces that they encountered. After unlocking the weapon finally at level 29 in the Japanese Pacific campaign, we can quickly see what makes it so strong. And it's a great mix of above average to really good properties, especially considering the usually very weak Japanese weapon statistics. The first and most glaring impression is the humongous 50 round magazine size. Now, with these 50 rounds, you completely can overwhelm your American enemies. The American enemies may have their Thompsons, which have more damage, but they don't have enough bullets, and 50 rounds ensures that you can actually kill a complete enemy squad without getting shot because you are forced to reload. Now, if you absolutely need to reload in between completely shredding American squads, it only costs you 3 seconds. 3 seconds is quite fast, especially since you can usually afford a nice additional reload speed perk on your assaulters. Regarding the damage, it sadly is not 6.8, because 6.8 is a threshold that enables you to kill any soldier in the game, any normal soldier, even with vitality, and only 2 hits. So, normal soldiers you will completely shred in two hits on short range. Vitality soldiers you will need three bullets, but that's also not that much. Of course, if you do headshots, they're gonna die instantly. And on the main important range, the medium range being 10 to 100 meters, well, you're gonna need four hits to kill an average soldier, and you're gonna need around five to six hits to kill a vitality soldier. Well, here comes the thing. If you combine this, 
with, which is obviously a weakness, only 3.3 damage isn't that good, it's actually bad. If you combine this with quite a good speed, quite a good firing rate and 50 rounds, you get a weapon that in, well, as you could see in the videos, completely shreds. Yeah? The stats are actually, well, the stats look worse than the weapon actually performs. And one of the main reasons for that is also the ridiculously low recoil. The horizontal recoil being only 7 is as good as 0. I literally never correct for horizontal recoil with this weapon because you won't feel it. The vertical recoil, it exists, but here comes the thing. Having only 24 means you can just, while you shoot, press your cursor down and this way you can easily correct the vertical recoil. And once you get used to this weapon, after a bunch of hours you will be able to completely laser your enemies with it, especially laser the heads of your enemies, which is quite important in the Pacific maps because you have very often trenches or you very often have obstacles where enemies are hiding behind, but their head is peeking out, especially a whole squad, and then you can just within only one or two seconds mow down the heads of a whole seven to nine man squad. Regarding tactics and using the ZIG-1920 to its fullest potential, the weapon mostly plays like a normal SMG, but it gives you additional lines of attack, literally, due to its unique mix of properties. The most important one is obviously the huge magazine size. It enables you to completely destroy groups of enemies and also solves the dilemma that you usually have with a full auto weapon, Let's say you spend 20 bullets and now you have to choose. Do I reload? Because I only have 10 bullets left. Because if I encounter a group of enemies, most likely I won't be able to kill them all and they shoot me. But if I reload, I can't shoot back in case someone surprises me. So there's always this problem and you're always have, you always have to take one of these two risks. But having a 50 round magazine size, being extremely mobile, being able to complete, po constantly reposition yourself, and having quite a fast reload speed means you can always take the optimal decision and you won't really expose yourself at any time. Also, being so fast means you can avoid enemy fire during battles since you can just easily readjust your position by a bunch of centimeters left, right or down and up. And you can even bayonet your enemies during fights since you have this bayonet <laughs> that one-shots enemies. All of these advantages combined make the ZIG 1920 a perfect starter weapon for your games on the offense. Because many objectives in the campaign are buildings. And buildings have the problem, if you're attacking them, there will be lots of defenders around and it can be hard to get in. And in order to get in, you have to reposition yourself a couple of times. You, be, you have to be very fast, being able to choose your angles, being able to avoid the enemy's line of sight and get yourself in a good line of sight. And also killing enemies on not only short but long range, uh, at least mid range, and this is where this weapon really shines. Also, since you're very fast, you can just jump through windows, you can quickly jump through the building, you can quickly get rid of everyone, you can use a couple seconds of safety to quickly reload and then just eliminate the rest of the defenders. So, overall, possibly the best weapon the Japanese currently have in the campaign, and the main reason while you can keep up with those American Thompsons and bar machine guns. So, that's it. If you have any, if you have any questions, or if you just like this weapon exactly like I do, because this is one of my favorite weapons in the game, let me know. Uh, until next time, goodbye.